Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. In uh, this lecture, I have to start speaking about uh, the uh, routing and we are going to do a lab about uh, the IP version 6 routing using the static route and the default static route. So as you can see here, we have a lab of eight points, but before I start doing this lab, let me just show you what is the scenario, then we will come back to the points and start doing them. So this is our lab scenario. We have router one and router two that are connected to each other. What I'm going to do now is to put the IP version 6 addresses on the Ethernet 2 of router 1 and Ethernet 2 of router 2. So the addresses are going to be 2001 colon colon here is 1 and here is 2001 colon colon 2. So we just put addresses from the same range. That means router 1 and router 2 can see each other. Okay. Now I'm going to make a network here which has the address 2111 colon colon 1 and here 2222 colon colon 1. So those are addresses for two different networks. One network is connected to router 1 and one network connected to router 2. Now if I don't do any routing we will see that router 2 will not be able to reach to this network. Actually Let's say if someone sitting inside this network, he is also not able to reach to this network. So that means we don't have routing, so they cannot reach to each other. But also someone sitting on this network, he is not also able to reach to that network. So that's also not going to happen. So what we need to do now, we need to create a routing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the simple static route and the default uh, route. So the static route is something we already have to know about it. That means you make routing manually. So you just say for router one, in case you want to reach to this network, send everything to your next hop, which is this address here. And you say to router two, in case you want to reach to this network, then send everything to your next hop, which is over here. Then after we do this configuration, we will see if we are able from this network to reach to that network and vice versa, so they can reach each other. So this is what we are going to do in this lab. Of course, I'm going to use the uh, static route, but also I'm going to show you that you can also use the static default route. So uh, also in case, for example, you have IP version 6 network and you want to go to the internet, then you can use the default route, which is the default static route actually. And I will just show you how you can make it. So that's what we are going to do in this lab. It's very simple lab, but uh, it's nice because uh, we will start doing the routing on the IP version 6 and I will show you how this can happen. So let's go now back to the points and start doing them. Point number one, create a bridge interface on router one and assign it an IP address, IP version 6 address of 2111 colon colon 1 slash 64. So let's put the picture. What I'm going to do now, if I go back here, I'm going to create a bridge interface. The bridge interface will represent this network. So we have to think that the router one is connected to a network, but I don't have a network connected to router one. So I create a bridge interface and on this bridge interface, I put this IP. Also, I will do the same that I create a bridge interface on router two. And then this bridge interface, I put on it this IP address. So we have to think that those bridge interfaces are two a separated network. So that's how I can emulate the network. Now let's do the first thing for the router one. Let's go to router one and on router one, I will create a bridge interface. Now router one and router two do not have any configuration on them. So it's just blank configuration. Then I will create here the bridge interface and then I will go to IP version six address. And uh, we will see that the bridge interface has received a link local address. You can see it over here. Now I need to put a, a global unicast address, which is 2111 colon, then uh, colon one slash 64. And uh, that's going to be on the bridge interface. All right. So I don't make it advertise and then that's it. So that's what I need to do on router one for the first point. Port number one is done. Port number two on the interface Ethernet two of router one, put an IP address 2001 colon colon one slash 64. So you can see on, on the picture what I'm going, I'm just putting now IP addresses, nothing more than that. I'm still on router one. So on router one, I want now to put an IP address on the interface Ethernet two, which is 2001 colon colon and then one slash 64 and this is gonna be on interface ethernet 2 
and that's it so i'm just putting ip addresses of course in the future labs i'm not going to show you how you can put ip addresses because you can see it's straightforward to not uh, lose the time by just putting ip addresses but for now as it is the first uh, lab we're doing for the routing i'm just showing you how you can put the addresses port number two is done port number three now we need to do the same work but we have to create a bridge interface on the router two so this is router 2, we have to create the bridge interface and we have to put for it the IP address IP version 6 2222 colon colon 1 slash 64. So let's do that. We go to router 2 now. I create the bridge interface, so which is emulating the network which is connected to router 2. Then I go to IP version 6 address and from here I will put an IP which is Two, 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 two. Please look to the picture so you can follow what I'm doing because I put there also the IP addresses slash 64 and this one is going to be on the bridge interface and that's it. Port number three is done. Port number four. Now we put on the bridge, we have to put on the Ethernet 2 of router 2, the IP address. So on the, the interface Ethernet 2 of router 2, put an IP address of 2001 colon colon 2 slash 64. It should be same range as the IP version 6 address with that we have put on Ethernet 2 of router 1. So let's do that. We go to router 2 again. And this time it should be 2001 colon colon 2 slash 64 and we put it on Ethernet 2 and that's it. So now Ethernet 2 of router 2 and Ethernet 2 of router 1 should be able to see each other because they have IP address from the same range. Point number 4 is done. Point number 5, ping from router 2 to the IP version 6 address 2001 colon colon 1 which is the IP version 6 address of router 1 on Ethernet 2. So do you have a reply and also try to ping the bridge interface. So let's do that. We go to router 2. This is router 2 now. And if I go to the terminal, if I say ping to the next hop address for router 2, which is 2001 colon colon 1, correct? That's the IP of Ethernet 2 of the router 1. And I make enter. Here we go. We see that we have ping reply. So that means he can see the IP address and of the interface Ethernet 2 of router 1. But if I ping to the bridge interface of router 1, which is 2111 colon colon 1, enter, we see they say no route to host. So that means we are missing to have route. If I do the same from router 1 to router 2, we will receive the same result. So that means we still now need to configure route to be able to reach to the bridge interfaces of the two routers. Point number five is done. Point number six, create a static route from router one to reach the network of the bridge interface of router two. So if I go back to the picture here, what I'm going to do, I want to do from router one, I create a static route to say that router one, if you want to send anything to this network, so send it to your next hop, which is this address. That's what I want to do. So I'm just precising to this network. Of course, we have to do also the way around from router 2 to uh, to the other network of router 1, but that's something we see it in the upcoming point. But now we have to mention that if router 1 want to go to the network or the prefix 2222, two, 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 then in this case, he had to send everything to his next hop, which is the IP version 6 of the interface Ethernet 2 of router 2. So let's do that. To go to router 1 and from router 1 we go to IP version 6 and then we go to route and from here I have to say I'm saying from router 1 if you want to send anything to the prefix 2222 two, 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 colon colon slash 64 which is the bridge uh, network connected to router 2 then send everything to your next hop address and the next hop address if you look to the picture it is 2001 colon colon 2. All right, so that's the next hop address. And if you want, I can copy it to show you that if we ping it, if we ping it from router one, then we should have a reply. That's for sure. So now that's what I need to do from the router one. And then I will say apply. It's reachable via the interface Ethernet 2. 
Very good. So I made the, this side from router one to say that if you want to go to that network, I'm specifying, and this is, as you can see, manually I'm doing that. So I'm specifying to go to that destination network, then you have to go to your next hop address. Let's see now what we need to do on router two. Point number six is done. Point number seven, create a default route. So default static route again. So we have to make it manually. Create a default route from router two to reach the network of the bridge interface of router one. So if we go back to the picture, now router one knows how to reach to this network, correct? He knows, but router two, he has to answer back. Router two doesn't know anything about this network. So this network, router two don't know about it. So how can he reply back to router one when he send, for example, if he send a ping, so the ping is request and reply. So he received the request, but router two do not know how to send the reply as an example. So what we need to do, we have to make a reverse route Okay, on router two to say, but in this case, I'm not going to say if you want to reach this network, I'm not going to precise this network. I'm going to say if you want to reach any network, anything. So this network is including in any network, right? So that, that's what the default route. So when you say you, when you want to go to anywhere, then send it to your next hop, which is the IP address of this interface over here. And that's what you want to do it also when you un apply it for the internet. In case you want to send everything to the internet, you cannot say to go to Google server, to go to Yahoo server. You just have to say to send to anywhere. So that's what the default static route that you need to do. And that's what we need to do now on router two. So let's go to router two. This is router two now. And from here, I have to say IP version six and I say route. Over here, I have to say to go to anywhere. When you say colon colon slash zero, that's a similar when you say on IP version four zero dot zero dot zero dot zero slash zero. Same thing. So that means to anywhere. So again, destination address colon colon slash zero. Then send it to your next hop, and the next hop for router two is two thousand one colon colon one. And if you want, we can try to ping this address. We have tried before, but if you want, you can redo it again. And uh, you see that we have a reply. So very good. That's what we need to do. Apply and OK. Now we have also here a static default route. So now router one knows how to reach to the destination network and router two knows how to reach to the destination network. So now we need to try to see if we can ping from one network to another, then this is going to be having a ping reply because before we had no route to host. Point number seven is done. And the last point, point number eight, ping from router two to the IP version six of the loopback interface of router one. Do you have a reply? All right, let's go to router two. Now I want to check if I can reach to the destination network which is 2111 colon colon one. That's the loopback interface of router one. So let's open the ping. And I will say, first let's do a normal ping. Ping to 2111 colon colon one. Enter. Yes, we do have a reply. But that's the ping going from the router. So that means from Ethernet 2. If I want the ping to go from the loopback of router 2. So if you want, now what I want to do or what I have already done, I made the ping, but this ping is going from this interface. From this interface is able to reach to this network. But I want also to check if from this network he's also able to get to this network. So that's also possible using the source address. So we go to router two, and now I will do the same thing, ping to this network, but now I will add from the source address, it's going this ping from two, 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 colon, colon, one. So 2222 colon colon one is the IP address, IP version six address on the interface loopback zero of router two. All right, and we make enter and here we go. So you can see now that from this uh, network to this network, that is possible that they can go to each other. Why? Because now the routers in their routing table over here, so router two will check, I want to go to the network which is 2111. So you see 2111, I say, oh, I know an entry on my routing table saying to go to anywhere, send it to 2001 colon colon one to my next hub. So then he will send it and it, re it received to router one, router one, he will send it to the network, which is uh, the loopback interface, which is connected to him. Then if you want to answer back, 
router one then router one also look to his routing table i want to send back the answer to the network two 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 slash 64 then he will check oh i have in my routing table this entry two 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 column column slash 64 uh, it's saying to send everything to the next hop then he will send it to his next hop and that's why the uh, two networks are able to see each other and they can ping each other Port number eight is done and with this point i have showed you how you can configure the static route and the default static route on the microtech router using the ip version 6 again this is manual routing we know that we do have dynamic uh, route uh, like ohpf and uh, rip and that's something i'm going to cover it in the upcoming lessons so i'm going to show you how you can configure ohpf version 3 and rip next generation which works on the ip version 6 again please if you don't know anything about the rip and about the spf i'm not really going to explain in details about them please look to my other courses i do have all explanation uh, for uh, the ospf and uh, for rip uh, on ip version 4 so same concept that you have on ip version 4 similar it is on ip version 6 the only difference is that addressing is uh, on ip version 6 we use the ip version 6 so this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was clear for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.